In this video I'm going to show you how to create a custom project for the ADI Cup 3029 board and any other processors and give you a brief overview of where all the key settings are. First of all, once we're in Crosscore Embedded Studio, we get to the new project wizard by selecting File, New, and then we select Crosscore Project. Here we get to provide a project name, in which case we'll go for Hello World. You can change the location if you want, so otherwise it'll just go into your Documents folder under CCS. Then we hit next to come onto the processor type selection. In this case we want to choose ARM for the processor family, 3029 for the processor type, and we can choose a silicon revision. In this case we'll go for 1.2. Then we click next again. Next is the configuration page. In the centre here we have a summary of what the default configuration is. In this case, pin multiplexing with a generated source file and C, which contains comments. We can either accept this by clicking on finish or we can click on configure project to make the configuration at this stage. In the configuration project page we have a list of the recommended add-ins, just pin multiplexed in this case. There's SimSys support here but it's been deprecated, it's available through the RTE config menu later on. Then we also have a list of system services and device drivers for various devices and functionality on the board. So we can choose any of these we want. Uh, such as the Interrupt Manager service. Uh, we'll see here that it's version 1.01 that's been added. Uh, we can click OK and our configuration has been updated. We now have the Interrupt Management service here and we click Finish to generate our project. Now that our project has been created, we can look in the Project Explorer or Project. You'll see under Source we've got generated.c file, Hello World, and generated header file. The system folder contains all of the generated files. You've got your RTE config and your system.svc for the configuration there. You get three tabs open with your new project. The first one is helloworld.c. This is just a template main function for you. It contains a platform.h which gives you a definition for all of your system peripherals and so on. ADI initialize is just a prototype for the ADI net components down here. And you've got an empty header, helloworld.h, in case you need it. The ADI net components here is just a function which calls initialization functions for any of the add-ins that you've got on your project and then you can add any additional code after this point. Next is the system.svc. This gives you similar control to the configuration wizard earlier and that you can add, remove or upgrade any add-ins and across the bottom here there are tabs for any add-ins which can be configured. In this case we've got pin multiplexing. So under pin multiplexing we can look at the various pins that are available and we can enable peripherals either for the per whole peripheral, say SPI2, you see that some pins have become unavailable because they're being used for SPI2, alternatively you can turn on individual pins if you wish. And again you'll see they become unavailable. Once you're done you can save off with file save and your pin mux file will be regenerated. Finally, we have the system.rte config, which is your SimSys configuration, and you'll see there's a SimSys tab as well as a device tab. So you want to have SimSys core enabled. Under the device, you want the startup. You notice that once I selected the startup, this has been flagged in orange all the way up to the device level, um, and there's a description here indicating that a configuration file is required for our dependency. So we're going to click on the global configurations here and everything becomes green again when the dependency has been satisfied or there is a resolve button up here which will take care of it for you. Now that we've selected all the components we need SimSys Core, Global Configuration Startup, we can save this again, File, Save, some regeneration will occur. Now that your application is configured you can go on to start editing the code. 